Welcome to the Aircomp Vision Best Practice Video Series. This video is a tour of the web interface for the Aircomp Vision cameras. Once you've logged into the camera, first menu you will see on the far left is for About. The About menu displays camera type and model, displays the firmware version, and will display the MAC address of the camera. This is a static read-only menu. It is useful for support. This menu is the image menu. Your picture has settings for controlling brightness, the image sharpness, color saturation, blue and red color. Below that, we will find the lighting settings. This has both 50 hertz and 60 hertz to prevent flicker caused by different frequency electrical systems. Below this, you'll find the illumination setting. This has automatic settings as a default, uh, it is also selectable for indoor, outdoor, or mixed lighting situations. The miscellaneous menu contains settings for digital image rotation by checking flip on or off and to enable auto exposure. In most cases, auto exposure should be left enabled as the default setting. If you have an auto iris model camera, a menu for auto iris will be enabled. This allows you to enable or disable the auto iris function on an auto iris camera uh, and make adjustments to the gain if auto iris is enabled. The next setting is resolution. This allows you to make adjustments to compression quality for JPEG and if an H.264 model, as all megadomes are, below that you will find the resolution. By default, it is set to half resolution. You can here do a custom crop by setting the resolution you'd like, and you can also save into camera firmware. Below that, we'll find the low light modes. By default, camera is set to balanced. You have options here to configure the low light mode to quality, moonlight, speed, or high speed, which is the manual mode. We have a day-night camera. Automatic is the default. You can manually force a day-night camera into color and disable night, force it into the night mode. If uh, set to automatic, we have adjustments here for the switching gain, which specifies the switching point between day and night. And the toggle guard setting below that allows us to specify the automatic switching point for night to day transition. The H.264 menu contains display settings for the RTSP RTP video streaming port. This allows you to customize the port setting or you can make adjustments to the RTP stream bitrate. There is also a function for H.264 RTSP stream link. This will allow you with the camera's current settings to generate an RTSP string you can then cut and paste into a media player such as VLC. Here's an example I'm going to cut and paste and place this into the VLC player and pull a string so you can see how that works. Also in the H.264 menu we have the ability to activate RTP multicasting of an H.264 stream and specify the multicasting IP addresses, the UDP port settings, and the SAP destination address for multicasting if we choose to enable. Next is the Network Setup menu. The Network Setup menu has space for a camera name, which can be displayed through software applications. The MTU setting, which allows manual adjustment of the maximum transmission unit size. IP address settings, where you can specify a manual IP address or enable the DHCP setting. The next menu is the administration menu. The access control functions allow us to configure both an admin and a user level password. Uh, the values can be up to eight ASCII symbols. If configured, the admin password will grant full access to all the camera settings and video via the web page. The viewer setting has uh, viewing access to all the camera settings and video but cannot change them.
The next menu is motion detection. Motion detection on and off, show motion frames only, zone size, sensitivity, and the active zone grid. Before I leave the camera menus, I'd like to point out the help button. The help button provides more information about the camera settings on that page. If you're ever wondering about a setting, clicking the help button will open another web page which will display more information about those settings. The last thing I'm going to do is demonstrate the PTZ function available in the web page. If enabled, you have a zoom in, zoom out function, as well as a PTZ control allowing you to do right, left, up, or down. That's it. This completes the tour. Thanks for watching.